all six of us are on the same page and wanting to go not just a unified direction but a very precise and concise unified direction and that's something that I don't think under us ever had actually yeah I think definitely having six dudes constantly giving their opinions on every little single thing is what makes it the best thing possible writing exactly how they want with six dudes on the same page at all times and I think they're really going to see things step up to a different place. Obviously, you know, losing a pretty significant member changed the dynamic in the band a lot. We, we just decided to just devote all of our time and energy to the record and to the new songs. I feel like with this record, we're really trying to push the boundaries. You're gonna hear under oath, but it's not gonna sound like the under oath that you know. So there's like an electronic bass to a lot of the songs rather than just like electronics on top of it. Nobody knew what was gonna happen. From, you know, the time that we started writing, we really had that mindset of just like, you know, we've done what we've done. Well, pre-production was awesome. We haven't done pre-production ever, really legit pre-production. And like, um, you know, and people kind of feel like they know what to expect of us, but we're doing, we're, we're, we have a conscious effort right now to like push it beyond that. It's just been all of us hanging out really and these songs just come together pretty easy for us. I mean, with every record, we try to uh, surpass the, the previous record. I think it's a another step forward for us. It's a, a continuation of the progression and not just another record. And to, like, um, just push ourselves as, as, as musicians and push, like, the, our, our whole vision of the record past what we would normally or where we would normally stop and say that's good we we go to that point and then we say okay well what else can we do like how can we improve upon it how can we make it better so yeah this this record was the time when you know, basically we set up played the songs recorded we demoed the songs but then we all got together the band and Jeremy and I and we went over the song and we said okay where is where is this song not awesome when we started it it was like yeah you know it's definitely a progression, but I think by the time we finish writing it, we're kind of like, well, yeah, I think we kind of surpassed what we were thinking as far as change is going. This whole record, you know, given that it was it was not over traumatized, but it was a, a new beginning of sorts. Uh, a lot of stuff was pretty, uh, we'll say, let's say, over analyzed is actually a positive way of putting it. Um, there was a, a whole lot of almost second guessing just because everybody wanted so much to make sure this record was a really special record. Whether you wrote this part or not, or you know, whatever's happening in the song, like, is this really the best for this song? Like, what's happening? Maybe keys or vocals or guitar line or whatever. It's like, is that does that make this the best it can be, or should we try something else? Well, what if there's a cooler part? You know, we just did this one part on guitar, but man, there could be a cooler one. And, you know, and so often, you know, when you approach a record like that, it can be 
overwhelming because everything can always be better. Uh, but so often when you have all these guys putting their heads together, it does get better until everybody in the band's like, yes, now it's awesome. Even though in a way, from original idea to finished idea, there might be, it may be 10% better, maybe only 3%, maybe just be that much more better, but enough parts on the record that are this much better, the whole record in the end ends up being this much better. Verse two, right? Technically, we could go over bom, wow, wow, but we're not. We're like, doing that later. Like the break tag. It's, yeah, I don't know it's what kind you of verse it. two. I mean, that's you're screaming there, right? Yeah, I'm gonna sing on the chorus with like maybe yelly screaming tags. I mean, sing yelly screaming tags on the chorus. Right. And then I'll kick back in like full force with where you are asking, "What is that?" Right. I think that everybody in the band contributes in their own way. It's it's not just like one dude calling all the shots. It's a very open discussion. There's some ideas and then they get thrown out on the table, whether they're from me or from Tim or Chris or Grant or whoever. Throw those ideas out there and then just bounce them around off everybody. And each song ends up being kind of a creation of everybody's input. So it's, it's cool. So like the drums are more like just playing yeah. a part rather than playing. Yeah, like not a drum part, like like a drum. Drums are keeping the beat, like the opposite. Like right. drums are playing a part, and there's something else keeping the whole under foundation. Like, yeah. Boom, 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 I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like with that big like. Something like that with like the bass doing that bass line with like lots of air on top guitar wise like just this like thick like wall but the drums have these gaps you know yeah. everyone kind of gets a say no matter whose song it is or whose idea it is or whatever um, if not if one person's not super super stoked we'll spend as much time as we can to try to get them uh, on board with it uh, yeah I didn't know what to expect coming into a situation riding with five other dudes, you know, I, I mean, because I hadn't really played music with that many people, so you never really know how the vibe's going to be when you're riding, but it felt totally natural, just fell right into place, like the first practice was awesome, everybody was stoked. i just say that everyone's on the same page, and everyone's excited about the direction, so... I mean, we've had we've had that before, but I think it's never been to where everyone's just completely open to going any direction and trying anything and not afraid to take a chance. Half this record's come together in the last two and a half, three weeks, uh, all while feeling each other out as well as feeling Daniel out. So. Him adding, he kind of came in and just, un, not unintentionally, but maybe indirectly kind of added like a whole new perspective on writing and stuff. We definitely hit like a pocket of like just comfortability that we hadn't had in a while. Probably almost every song is going to have some sort of percussion stuff on it. And we've kind of done it in a weird kind of 
certain way. Like I feel like usually, typically, you would get everything, get all the drums, and then maybe do all the percussion or move on to bass, and then get everything, and then come back and do percussion. But we've just been kind of like randomly, like yeah, yeah, doing guitars, and then come in and do a bass, and then. Yeah, I've done a little bit of percussion, but it's been like very sporadic, I guess. We had all we had a lot of stuff done before he joined, but we ended up scrapping a lot of it. Um, you know, after we got a whole view of what the song was going to be, and we really had a lot of different ideas and ways that we wanted things to change. So, you know, we ended up scrapping a lot of it, rewriting a lot of different things, and you know, writing a ton of stuff from scratch with him, and he's. You know, had a lot of really cool ideas, and one song on the record in particular, he had um, a huge part in. Like, it, like the the beginning two riffs were actually um, riffs that he had written. I probably shouldn't admit this, but I hadn't ever really heard Norma Jean. Uh, I'd heard bits. I'd recorded a song for him, but it's like I was. What I heard was cool, but I'm not typically gonna listen to a whole lot of music made after like 1970. I wasn't that familiar with how good a player Daniel was, but he is a really, he's a really good drummer. I mean, Jeremy and I are both like really pleased. Hey Justin, let's get that foam after all. Oh yeah, it's the slide and if we had it on, it would just sound so much yeah. bigger. If it were kind of suspended instead of Though this has nice impact. You like that? Chris had a song, I guess he usually does a song that's just kind of samples and, and noise and his, his whole thing. Um, and he, he was working on that for this record and uh, he had this really cool beat that he had over it but wanted to hear live drum sounds. So um, while I think they were tracking guitar in Studio A, we went, we were in the, Chris was in the B room working on his stuff. So I went in there and we set up just a little kind of vintage kit and uh, super stripped down and laid down like two different drum beats and laid them over the top of each other and made this crazy, crazy song. It's kind of weird how smooth the recording process has been. We've never had a recording process where we all aren't stressed or anything. It's just been a very, um, just a lot more, I don't know if we're more mature, we know what we want or we know kind of how to get where we want to go without hitting a lot of roadblocks or what, but just this record's been a lot more about going forward and creating and not so much about like, figuring out how to go forward. Yeah, his drum stuff is stoking me out a ton. Um, the, yeah, some of the stuff that he's doing is just is just awesome, and he's got a lot of really cool ideas, and, um, and his mustache is formidable. What are you doing, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be great video. <laughs> 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 All right, I'll try that. That's perfect. I'm moving on. Here we go. Oh, that's weird. That's how I record the record, one note at a time. Nice. Oh, just checking out my axe for my bass. Oh, yeah. Let's get that. Good enough for scratch. <laughs> I messed it up. Yeah, I pretty much
much relearn them every time I record them, just because um, Tim Tim pretty much does the scratch guitars with the drums, so they'll add like little licks and fills and riffs and just you know little things, and then he records them on guitar, and then I usually do bass after they do guitars on a song because he knows all the stuff he put on there. So then I come in, play what I have, and I have to learn all the stuff that he changed. It was totally has changed what it was. Right. It was supposed to be like a different version of kind of like Jimmy World Good Goodbye Sky Harbor, which is nothing like this now. Right. You know? <laughs> yes. Like it was supposed to, it was, it was to be, a whole, whole song was a giant build, and then drop off, and then build, and then the end, or drop off the end. I Secret, little secret action. A little, little, little secret deadly I got. Give me, give me a nice turn around there, Jeremy. Hold on. For one of these. <laughs> oh, hey, didn't see you go in. <laughs> little sitcom. Sorry, Jeremy. Nonchalantly documenting. Where am I at? I got no synth. Uh oh. Oh, this isn't this isn't what we have for. We don't have the memory man power supply. Oh, you don't have it? No, we have the memory boy supply. Oh, sorry. For some reason, I thought you had the memory man. It's all good. It, 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 it ends too high. Well, it's pretty typical. But let's party. Do. Let's just keep partying with it. Let's see what happens. Give me a high guy. Alright. Don't go. Like a, you know what I'm saying? Like a, like an airy thing. Right. So a pad, but not an underneath pad, kind of sitting on top. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure how I want it to sit okay. yet. But um, as far as percussion goes, I was just assuming that Daniel would come up with something awesome. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, that <is> dumb. <laughs> I mean, Daniel has been a great addition. Good, and he's a great guy. He's a great guy. Uh, he's he's really fun. Yeah. And he has great uh, mustache. <laughs> Doing just random stuff like messing around with uh, my iPad a lot, running stuff through that, do, using different, like all kinds of different synths. Like we, you know, me and Daniel one day went and played stuff on top of the, the grill that's at the studio and just like mess around and yeah pretty much we're just like trying to get as weird as possible with it which is exciting me a lot because I love doing that stuff and so does Jeremy so that's working out really well but also I know that there's times when you know bands will say oh this is like the best thing that we've ever done and then I hear it and I'm like really you know <laughs> whereas yeah. you know so to be in the band standpoint like to be working on something like this record we you know truly believe that this is you know hands down the best thing that we've done and but it's it's hard to say that because like I said the the uh, the view that a band has on something is always going to be different than the view that 
you know, somebody just listening to it has. So I think everything's moving fairly quickly and without any major hiccups or anything like holding us back. Um, we're trying to stay on top of the process for guitars and just make sure everything's being uh, efficiently organized and done with the amount of time that we have to do it in. And I think all that's good. So I mean, it sounds uh, too professional. I'm gonna play along a little bit. good not to get too attached to anything you write early because it's always going to be better in the end. I feel like those no, cho no choices aren't as cool as they could be. Yeah. Like they're rubbing. I that erases it first. So do you think the muddy, the open just muddies it a bit? Maybe just it's do. I was going to say, do we like, need that in there? No. It's just, that's what it should feel like. Probably right. more like... It's it's this it's very seldom that there's that sort of compromise. Well, you like that part. Well, I'll give you that one, but I'm getting this one. Mm -hmm. um, there's not a whole lot of that. I'm sure, there's some spots where somebody in the band doesn't love that one part, but enough other guys in the band are like, man, we really feel it, you know. So it's not it, you could call that compromise, I guess, but more in the sense of trying to take one part and try to make it water it down so that it doesn't offend anybody is not the way to do it. It's, you know, it's more like, let's figure out what to do exactly. It's not about whether this guy's right or that guy's right. It's more about like, let's just figure out what the right thing to do is.
I think this time it was a great feat for the band because it was a time to maybe reinvent themselves considering this you know, situation with band members changing and such and uh, they had a huge task ahead because like I said they've sold a ton of albums and have a huge fan base worldwide and just went on this world tour and you know everything's hitting on 11 for them and uh, you know I think going into it they kind of approached it like they have all their other records and then realized quickly that it wasn't going to work that way Is that the first one? That was the one, the first one we liked. Here's the new one. I think so too. I've really gone out of my way to, to be like, is, I mean, as far as the singing stuff goes, to be like, is this something I'd listen to? But most of the days were spent working with Spencer and refining his melodies and lyrics and such, which you know, he's a great lyric writer and something I never knew about the band, honestly. Uh, because sometimes underneath all the noise are great lyrics and you just don't realize it. And uh, that was a nice surprise for me to read and hear him, hear him sing uh, the lyrics the way he wanted to sing them. I think that was a nice surprise. Uh, but yeah, I primarily did vocals and uh, helped him along his melodies and as long as lyrics and everything was good. I think I've already done just like the vocal melodies for two or three different choruses and a couple of different verses that, and probably changed them like three or four times each until I found the one that I thought was way different and cooler than what just like easily comes to your mind. I think I've been spending a lot of time going like, well, yeah, when this singing part you would hear this automatically it's like well that's obvious and I felt like we always do like it's, kind of, it's easy to do the obvious thing and this is the first time I've really sat down and been like I don't want it to be like that anymore that's way better cool. it's actually awesome because vocal production goes one of two ways you're either really comfortable with someone and you get great takes. Like, I was really comfortable with Adam. Mm -hmm. um, James Wisner I was really uncomfortable with. Um, Jeremy, I was like, I knew him, but I had never worked with him. And I was like, this is going to go one of two ways. But I worked with Goldman before, mm -hmm. so my backup plan was like, if we don't get along, then I can just get Goldman to produce the vocals. Just having someone on the other side of the glass telling you that sounded terrible or that sounded awesome is a weird vibe to have, mm -hmm. you know? Because someone's telling you, you know... You can do better. But yeah. yeah. It's, so you got to have like a real respect for someone and a real understanding of what each other's role is and, you know, like... You've got to feel respected to take criticism from somebody. Absolutely. Like someone telling you that that sounded like crap. If you feel like they don't respect you or if you don't respect them, it's just going to be like a whatever. I'm going to do what I want. Apparently just this one. Now it was just this one. Now it's just this one. We used this for a minute and didn't like it. No! They put me underground! So, you know, there was a lot of adapting to a new producer, you know, co-producers, me and Matt together, um, and dealing with new members and new member roles. Dealing with Spencer being the primary singer, which he is, and he did a fantastic job. But, you know, Spencer finding out who he is, and he knew about, a lot more about who he was than we thought he did, and I think that's a... 
you know, the awesome thing about him is that I feel like he was like a little kid in the back of the room just waiting for his chance to shine, and he did. But me and Jeremy are, it's like we have the same kind of sense of humor, yeah. and we have a great time, and he really respects me, and I really respect him as a vocalist as well, and we just kind of shoot off of each other, and, like, he's very, like, as soon as it's great, he's like, man, you sound great. That's awesome. Like, yeah, it's perfect. I couldn't tell you to do it any better. And then when that happens, when the next time something comes around, you're like, well, I know you can do that better. And you're like, cool, yeah, I know, because, you like, you know, like, I know you respect me, and, like, mm -hmm. you know what I can do. So it, we've been working really good together. Like, not that, not just another hold on, but hold on till like if it if that took us over it. So it's about that break starting with till my reconstruction is a little awkward. We okay. thought so too, but I think his fear was any downtime in the gap that they would. Sure, I'm not I'm not suggesting downtime. I'm suggesting have another a fourth hold on. It could it may not be full. It may not be a full hold on. Like if it was, I don't know, till my re, what's, what's the, what's the whole line? Till my, to my ideal reconstruction. You're done. <laughs> Look at that. Why am I done? Yeah, he's, you're not helping. He's done. You're going to convince him he's going to, he's checked out he and then he'll check out. out. I love he hasn't that. checked out. <laughs> I love checked out. I'm, I'm really excited for the outcome. Just having worked with this band before, watching the changes from when, when Dallas left the band to when Spencer joined the band, you saw a massive change, and it worked. And then when kind of the whole band really got it together was to find the great line, which was the first time that everyone wrote from scratch as six guys from that lineup, again, they reached a whole different level. And then this is kind of like the next progression of the band. It's a new lineup, a new vibe, and I feel like it's only, you know, a progression forward and it's gonna roll. It's weird that we, the five of us have been playing together for like eight years. And we have one new dude that he's been around for like two months. And that's like all we needed. Mm. That we, I mean, we hang out together every night. That's never happened before. Yeah, I think this is really the next major step in this band's career. I think it's going to take them... Everyone thinks the band's going to take a step backwards or stay the same. I think even the band is worried about that. But I really think this record is what's going to take them to the next level. Well, I think when Daniel stepped in, we kind of hit like a... a pocket where... Um, not in any way to kind of say that, you know, Aaron was holding us back per se, but there was just a lot of things that got evaluated on all of our ends, including his, him leaving kind of brought in um, a lot of realities that we hadn't really faced yet. And we basically um, hit a pocket where when Daniel came down and we started jamming, we all kind of um, had an open mind and kind of were forced to have an open mind uh, to the future of Under Oath and understanding that we may not be a band uh, much longer or we may not be the same band or um, basically change was inevitable to a degree and so we kind of just opened ourselves up to that not really knowing where we were going to go or where that open mindedness was going to take us and we ended up just going from come down and jam with us for a few days see how it feels to like by the end of the first week being like yeah man like we want you to write the record with us and by the end of the next week we had written two or three brand new songs we were writing like for a few days or like a song a night but i know before we came, came into the studio we were listening to some demos that we had done and we were actually on our way home from practice and tim called me and he was like he was like dude he was like i'm listening to these songs and he was like I have no doubt that this is the biggest change that we've had since, like, they're only chasing safety, and, you know, this record sounds, you know, nothing like that record, but 
the change that we had from they're only chasing safety to define the great line in our eyes this is a pretty big one and from the last record to this record like we see personally like that change there i'm stoked on the changes with the band i mean it's always sad to see someone go that you like and enjoy being around but at the same time under oath has always been about change they've embraced change and every couple of records they go in a completely new direction and I feel like Spencer being able to step up and be 100% the front man, for him to be able to actually sing and not just be screaming 90% of the time is awesome. And I've heard little bits of pieces of that so far and it sounds spectacular. He's finally getting to shine and be who and what he is. It's been really quick. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely not used to just, I mean, because of the timeline that they were they were on, it was like, well, they called me and they're like, well, we're recording in about a month, a month and a half, and we, uh, you want to come down and jam? They're like, hey, can you, they call me up and they're like, can you come down like tomorrow? I think we did great. And I think it's their best record to date. I think it's their most different record to date. We leave the studio together and we like, we all go out to dinner together and hang out and then out of the two apartments we have, which were split, three people staying in each, you know, each apartment, we'll all leave from dinner to go hang out at one apartment together until so people start kind of leaving to go to their beds, you know. So it's really cool being in a situation to where we all just want to hang out with each other and have fun because there's no weirdness. There's, there's no, I don't know, it's just good vibes all around everyone's like best friends again it's really cool our last few records have been super super tight super um super super to the grid and this record i mean we're just rolling with a lot of different stuff we have a lot of uh a lot more room for things to sound human and a lot more room for things to be a little out of tune and fighting with each other and a lot more room for things to start a little late and jump a little early and just the whole vibe of the record is very much this energetic flow is much more way more than just a uh, performance digitally enhanced to be this punishingly perfect grid yeah like writing this record recording this record and touring this record on this record it's very exciting um, stoked on all of it. I can't wait to hear it done, but I don't want to be done with the record because we're having such a good time. <laughs>